Hi, and welcome back to Build Your Own Data Logger, the virtual course run by Freak Labs and Wild Labs. This is Module 3, Submodule 3, Analog to Digital Converters, and Lab 3A, Checking Battery Status. In the previous subsection, we learned how analog and digital converters worked, the difference between 1-bit, 2-bit, and 10-bit ADCs, and saw some demonstrations of them in action. In this section, we'll actually be using the analog to digital converter on the wild logger board to read our battery level and converting that into the actual battery voltage. The goal of this lab is to do a basic analog to digital conversion on the battery pack we're plugging into the wild logger board. It'll actually be a little trickier than the demo we saw previously, where the ADC value can be almost directly converted to voltage. Our ADC voltage range is from 0 to 3.3 volts. Our battery voltage will range somewhere between 3.6 and 5.5 volts depending on the state of charge. So even the minimum battery charge or the battery voltage would be outside our range. To deal with this, the wild logger has extra circuitry for the battery sensing to scale the battery voltage going into the ADC by one half. This allows us to fit neatly into the range of our ADC. But then we have to include that scale factor in our calculations when we calculate the actual battery voltage. The number one concern from multiple surveys I've seen for people involved in environmental monitoring is battery life. It's no surprise because devices are constantly deployed in remote areas that are extremely difficult and expensive to get to. The main cause of field failure, or the limiting factor in field deployment, is battery life. So from a data logger design perspective, one of the critical pieces of information we can collect is battery health. And this can be determined from the battery voltage. Based on this information, we'll be able to track the performance of the batteries we use, and also it'll allow us to determine if we need to increase the size of our batteries, like changing them to C or D cells instead of AA, or changing our battery strategy altogether, like adding in solar charging. Knowing our battery voltage will also allow us to take specific actions, like holding off on using power-hungry sensors or changing the amount of time we sleep so as to conserve energy and maintain a longer deployment life until the next battery change. Here's an extremely useful diagram for this lab. It demonstrates the battery discharge curve for AA alkaline Duracell batteries. The nominal voltage, or the average somewhere between fully charged and discharged for alkaline batteries, is 1.5 volts. However, you can see that they can vary from 0.8 volts to 1.6 volts, and often higher. The important thing to recognize is that the curve changes depending on the discharge current. At higher discharge currents, the curve usually has a plateau and then essentially a cliff drop where you can easily see when the batteries are pretty much at the end of their useful life. That's the curve that most people and companies use because they fall into the most common use cases where the batteries are used for portable consumer electronics like cameras and toys. The curve that you see here is actually useful because you can see the voltage change with time based on a very low discharge rate. In this curve, it shows a discharge current down to 5 milliamps. At that level, you can see that the voltage is close to linear, meaning there isn't exactly a cliff drop, but mainly a slow decline. Our ideal use case will be where we are closer to 1 milliamp average discharge current or less. In that case, we can assume a near linear discharge without a cliff drop. In some cases, we'll get to a point where we need to start taking into account self-discharge of batteries as a significant determinant of battery life. In this lab, we won't be using any libraries. We're going to read the analog to digital converter directly from the pin associated with the battery, and then calculate the voltage from it. To do this, we'll be using the analog read built in Arduino function. We'll just be using it in the default mode, which means it uses the power supply as the reference voltage, which defines the ADC range. For the wild logger, this is 3.3 volts, but with an accuracy of plus or minus 1.5%. This is fine for a power supply, but not ideal for accurate sensor measurements. For higher precision applications, we can actually use an external voltage reference, which would get us to a reference voltage with an accuracy of 0.1% and better temperature stability, but we'll save that for a different course. Along with reading the ADC, we'll need to know how to convert that to our battery voltage. We'll be using this formula, which may look weird to you right now, but we'll be discussing it more when we analyze the code. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started on the lab. 
Now let's take a moment and look at the code we have here. The first thing you probably noticed is that I'm using pound define statements to create some constants. The reason I'm doing this is to keep the code a bit cleaner and more understandable. Having numbers in the code without any context is frustrating for other people reading your code or if you're coming back to your code after a few weeks or months. I've done that many times. Instead, it's good coding practice to create variables or constants with meaningful names to let people know what those numbers mean. At the beginning, I'm defining the constant ADC underscore units, which are the total number of ADC units available for our ADC. For a 10-bit ADC, it's 2 to the 10th power, or 1024. For a 12-bit ADC, it'd be 2 to the 12th power, or 4096 total ADC units, and so on. Next, I'm defining the ADC reference voltage, which is 3.3 volts since we're using the voltage we're running the microcontroller at to define our ADC reference, or our total ADC voltage range. And I'm defining the ADC scale factor, which is 2, since we'll need to multiply the final voltage by 2 to get the actual voltage at the battery. If you remember, we did this because we divided the voltage by 2 originally to fit into our ADC range. What that looks like physically is a voltage divider in the hardware. If we ever get a chance to do a course on basic electronics, we can go into that in more detail. Next, I define an int variable, which is the pin for our battery input. The pin for the battery input is A6, where the A stands for analog or ADC input. We should have documentation, which has a list of all the pin definitions. Now we go into the setup function, where we set the mode of the battery pin to input using the pin mode function. This means that we'll be able to read the value on the pin. After that, we have our serial port initialization and printing out our title header. In the loop function, we're creating an int variable called bat ADC, and it'll hold the value we get when we read from the ADC. To read from the ADC, we use the built-in function analog read with the pin as the argument. The ADC can only read from analog pins or pins prefixed with the letter A. So in this case, it's pin bat or A6 as we defined above. Next, we calculate the millivolts per ADC unit. We'll need this value when we convert the ADC we're reading to a voltage. To get the number of millivolts per ADC unit, we take the voltage reference and divide it by the total number of units of the ADC. Since the ADC reference voltage defines the ADC voltage range, this means we're taking the ADC voltage range and dividing it by the total number of intervals. This gives us the voltage per unit interval, or voltage per ADC unit. Next, we create a float variable called battery voltage, where we calculate the voltage. To find the voltage on the pin, we take the raw ADC value, or bat ADC, and multiply it by the millivolts per unit. That's the voltage at the pin. But if you remember, we divided the actual battery voltage in half so that we could bring it into the range of our ADC. So to get the actual battery voltage, we have to multiply the voltage at the pin by the scale factor of 2 to get the actual voltage at the battery. Now that the data is collected and the calculations are done, all that's left to do is to output the values in a friendly format. We'll be printing the raw ADC values out so you can see exactly what the ADC is reading and then the voltage that we've converted it to. That'll be the voltage at the battery. And finally, we add a delay at the end to control the speed of our printouts. Now let's test out our code and see how it works. Here you can see that we're reading zero from the ADC and a voltage of zero on the battery pin. This makes sense because the battery isn't plugged in. Once we plug the battery in, we start seeing some voltage. Unplugging the battery again and we see zero. Our ADC is working, and the voltage is correct, as confirmed by my voltmeter. Congratulations! In this lab, we learned how to read the battery via the analog-to-digital converter, and then calculate the battery voltage. We also learned about the discharge curves of batteries, and how we can correlate the battery voltage to the charge of the battery. Coming up next is Module 3, Submodule 3, Lab 3B. Give me your voltage! I command you!